Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight, from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark cards bring you an unusual true story on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. And here is our distinguished host, Mr. Lionel Barrymore. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Hallmark Hall of Fame, where we offer you true stories about real people. And tonight, we're going to bring you one of the most remarkable stories from the pages of American history. You'll hear a dramatization of the Pilgrim Fathers' first Thanksgiving in America and of the courageous Indian who made it possible. The, the Indian's name was Tesquantum. He was called Squanto, and believe it or not, he spoke with a Cockney accent. Now, now you'll hear this amazing true story in just a moment. And now here is Frank Goss from the makers of Hallmark Cards. One of the particular joys of Christmas is sending and receiving Christmas cards. While the pleasure Christmas cards bring can never be measured, isn't it good to know that Hallmark cards are priced the same this year as they were last year and the year before and the year before that? And that the quality of Hallmark cards has constantly improved throughout the years? Yes, today, just as for many Christmas seasons, that Hallmark on the back of your card is looked for and welcomed. It tells your friends you cared enough to send the very best. Lionel Barrymore appears by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of the Cole Porter musical Kiss Me Kate, starring Catherine Grayson, Howard Keel, and Ann Miller. And now Mr. Barrymore brings you tonight's exciting story on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. Port Tuxet Indians had no calendars, and so the birth date of Squanto must remain forever mysterious. But this much we do know. In the year 1615, Tesquantum was a mature warrior of high tribal standing. He had a beautiful wife and two children and an impressive string of wampum. Uh, it, it, it was in the spring of this year that he led six other Portuxet warriors on a hunting trip south, down into that region which we now know as Cape Cod. And it was while they were tracking a wounded deer through the great dunes that they spied a wondrous thing. <laughs> It was the biggest canoe in the world, with great white wings. And from it came a smaller canoe containing white men. Now, Squanto and his friends had heard of the men with white skins, and, and they'd also heard of the strange and marvelous things to be seen aboard their great canoes. And moreover, the Portuxet warriors were honorable men and trusting. And this is what happened. Some pretty beads. Huh? Hey, looky. Beads. <laughs> pretty, eh? You speak no English, I presume. I a finely built lot you are, too. Strong backs, well dude. Well, come out to the ship, me aunties. Ship, see? Out there. We make big powwow. Powwow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Fine, fine. And the boat then, like good bribe lads, huh? Helps my night crew, man! Aye, I'll wait till you Indians never saw a marvel to compare with Peter Ross Frigate. All right, shut up, man! And I'll watch till they never saw even finally match marvels to compare with you. 
on the block at the Barcelona slide market. from Barcelona to London. And they brought him a good price, too. Squanto had picked up a little English during the months on board ship, and because of this, he was purchased by Thomas Grotnick, a tavern keeper, who promptly renamed his place the Red Man <laughs> and set Squanto to work as a waiter. Well, four long years rolled by. You there! Squanto! In but a moment, good my lords. Hello. Good my lords, good my lords. Hello, Squanto. Well, catch my eye, is it be done? Captain Hunt. What will you, Captain? I'll and some talk. We've naught to talk on. Uh, but you're wrong there, me bucko. How so? Word has come to me that you've been speaking of late on certain matters pertaining to your territory in the new world. Pray elucidate. Which matters? Gold, Squanto. Gold and emeralds and diamonds. Why does not tell me these things whilst we're on my ship? In those bygone days, I commanded not the English tongue. Uh, you know, you're a valuable man, Squanto. Knowing where all that gold and emeralds and them diamonds are. Squanto, get the hiver! Unhand my arm, good Captain. A Hunt. valuable man and expensive, too. Unhand me. I've reason to know you're expensive, Squanto. Tell me, my fine red skin, canst read? But a little. This bill of sale. <laughs> Aye, bill of sale. Start to fetch me sack. Fetch it, thine own self, fat one. The Indian's mine. Brought this hour from his master. Well, uh, what think you, Swanto? It all goes ill. Nay, it all goes good. Because you're going back to the new world, Swanto, on my ship. And you're going to show me just where I can find those great stores of gold and emeralds. And all them diamonds. Now look, you Indian. See you yet the spot? Nay. Nine days have we fared northward along this coast. Nine days. And mark ye... Be this a fool's errand, I'll sell you to a Madagascar galley. Good, my master. Huh? Lend me of thy spyglass. Think you see it, huh? Here. Oh, if a handsome glass... Aye, but use it, man, use it. Solid. Solid. And heavy, too. Use it. As you command. Uh, uh, and now, farewell, Captain Hunt. Fare thee well. try to follow him. There was no one to order them to do so. Captain Peter Hunt was dead. Squanto waited under the beach of Cape Cod 
and struck out for his home in the Portuxet Indian tribe. But during his six long years of slavery, a plague had struck the Portuxets, had struck and obliterated every last member. His wife and children were dead. Now Squanto was alone in the world. The last of the Portuxet Indians, man without a tribe, he set off for the camp of Massasoit, supreme chief of all councils. All councils. Strange story. Most strange. What is to become of me, O oh Massasoit? This quantum, you must find tribe to take you in. But there's none. I know, O oh Massasoit. Speak, Somerset. Down at shore. New colony of Englishmen. So? They want interpreter. Ah, they starving. They soon be dead. Not need interpreter. But suppose they conspire. If Squanto there could learn their secret. Mm. Yes. The Squantum, you go to English colony. They knew here. Arrived last year. They like children. Like children, they not know how to fend for themselves. They're starving. Soon they be dead. Until then, you live with them as my ambassador. <laughs> In just a moment, we return to the second act of the Hallmark Hall of Fame. Do you enjoy saying Merry Christmas in a personal way to certain people on your Christmas card list? To a favorite aunt, perhaps? Or your family doctor? Or the little folks you're especially fond of? Well, if you do, here's something nice to know. You can select special Christmas cards for special friends or relatives at a store where Hallmark cards are sold. You'll find a wonderful variety of styles to choose from, really heartwarming cards that say what you want to say, just the way you want to say it. And here's an important plus. This year you can choose new Slim Jim Christmas cards to delight your dear ones. They're the brightest idea in Yuletime greetings because they're shaped in an unusual way. Each Hallmark Slim Jim card is taller and narrower than the traditional card, so it will really stand out in a mantle or table collection. And remember, the familiar hallmark and crown on the back of each card you send will carry an extra measure of joy, for it means you care enough to send the very best. And now Lionel Barrymore brings you the second act of our true story of Squanto. the Portuxet Indian was indeed a victim of life, sold into slavery, his family and tribe wiped out by plague. He was now an Indian without a tribe, and as such was dispatched by the mighty Massasoit to attend the gradual extermination of the pilgrims. It was noon of a cold March day when he strode into the clearing of what we now know as Plymouth, Massachusetts. And look you, William Bradford, from out the forest, an Indian carries no arms. Nonetheless, be wary. I will hail him. How? How? A very pleasant afternoon to you, good gentlemen. What? Well, it's impossible. A cockney Indian? I come in peace, O oh Englishman. And I wonder, could you direct me to the abode of Governor William Bradford? I am Governor Bradford. I bear greetings from Massa Soyet, Governor. He trusts the times find you and your people well. Massa Soyet knows how the times find my people. But come, you've made a long journey. We must find food for you. What is your name? Tess Quantum, but I prefer to be called Squanto. I'm Captain Standish. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, Squanto, yours must be a remarkable story. Hmm? Tis, good Captain. Tis. And I'll tell it to you both. Ah, yes, the 
plague. We were told of it. A like disaster swept our ranks this past winter. Many died. It was not the plague so much as the hunger. Undoubtedly, Massasoit has told you of our tribulations. He did mention something. Yes. The maize we planted withers in this sandy soil. Our nets are rotted. The very beasts of the forest hide from our guns. We have suffered much in the name of our divine father. But there's food all about you, good my masters. You have but to find it. Oh, where? I could show you. Let me see. How would you like a nice eel stew tonight? Enough for the entire colony. Eel stew? Don't twit me for a nonny, man. The eels are gone. Won't be back until next year. Captain Stanish? You shall catch the first. I swear it on my head. Gentlemen, if you'll follow me. All right, Squanto. Now, where are the eels? Follow me into the water. Mm. It's cold. Well, why don't we go farther down where it's sandy? This bottom is all mack and where you are. Mm. Like so? Like so. And? Stamp your feet deep into the muck. Oh, now. Do it. Do it. Mm. No, this is tricky, Squanto. I'll have you. Oh, what's that? What, uh, there's an eel. By the thunder, an eel, and I, I feel more. You see? You, there on the bank, all of you, into the water. Thanks to Squanto, tonight we eat. But that was good. A fine dish. Fine. Have all been fed? To bursting, John Alden, to bursting. For this feast, dear Lord, we give our humble thanks. Amen. 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 And now then, Squanto, you were speaking of maize. It will not grow in this soil without preparation. How do you prepare it? Into each hill, you must drop three grains of maize at a depth of two ants. Oh? Then on top of them, you must place a fish. A fish? Yes. It seems to feed the seed and induces it to grow strongly. Yeah, will you do it? Squanto, something confuseth me. Yes? I'm a bluff man, and I like to speak straight out. Do so. You were sent here by Massasoit to watch us die, weren't you? Well... Weren't you? Yes. And yet you have decided that we should live. Yes. This will not go well with Massasoit. I know. Well, then, why are you doing this? I was an Indian without a tribe. That is a terrible thing. But now, as of this day, I found a tribe to my liking. You pilgrim Englishman, let us say I have adopted you. Having lost one tribe, I do not intend to lose another. Squanto? Yes, Governor. My hand. And welcome to your new home. <laughs> Eagle has spoken, spirit of water has spoken, dark king that live in white forest has spoken, test quantum traitor, test quantum die. <laughs> Blunderbuss, I'll soon settle this. Oh, and bring Squanto. I'll need an interpreter. Massasoit, let say one, or take three. He says he brings this knife from Massasoit. Oh, what am I to do with it? He wants you to cut off my head and send it back. Well, I'll not do it. The alternative may be war. If they want war, they can have it. I'm ready. But the knife. Well, they can pull it from out that tree and take it home. Come, Squanto, we've work to do. You're not afraid to turn your back? Squanto, I've been a soldier all my life, all over the world. Nothing rattles the enemy like a man who is contemptuous. And that you are. That I am. Why, well, the heathens here. Squanto, help me stand my supporting fork in the earth. Uh, and now he lay the blunderbuss in the nuts. Is that the kill? Now I'll put the fear in the nuts all. I'll just blow on this punk here. And touch the powder pan. <laughs> will you look at them go? Mary, down! They are famed runners, good sir, but I fear they will return. Yeah. 
Uh, that's it. That's it. Eight feet high and sharp at the top. That's the way to build a stockade. Every able-bodied man turned out for drill this morning, just as your proclamation said. That's it. Governor. Over here, Squanto. What is this? Hey, they threw it down before our gate. What is that? What has he got there? It is bad. It is evil. Throw it away. A dozen arrows tied together with the skin of a snake. <laughs> what does it mean, Squanto? It is a declaration of war. Oh, and what are we to do? The tribe receiving it must send it back with the arrows. This means it's been received and understood, and the receiver is ready to fight. Oh, but we're we not. The stockade is only half finished. What if we don't send it back? That signifies you are already defeated. They'll come and kill and burn. How think you, Squanto? I have an idea. It has never been done before, but it might work. We will send it back to them, but we'll do it with a difference. Here, almighty oh Master Hoyt, is white man answer. It's fearsome answer. Oh, evil answer. Here, you, oh, chiefs of tribes, see, white man's answer. They have sent back snake skin and arrows, but within skin of snake, they have sewn bullets and gunpowder. Is white man magic? Throw on fire. Let God speak to Master Zoid. Gods have spoken. What do they say we do? We go to camp of whites at sunrise. Look you there, Squanto. Yonder come Indians, many. Yes, I see. Think you it augurs war? I wish not. Nay. Nay, not war. Marry, see you in their arms. Hey. They bear corn. Tis the time of the corn god feasting. They would feast with us. Ah, and we with them. Yes, Squanto. It shall be a feasting of peace. Aye, and of thanksgiving. And so were blended the customs of the American Indian and the deep religious beliefs of the Pilgrim Fathers. Blended with the first thanksgiving. And thanks to the courage of Squanto, the colony was to survive. But his story ends here. For shortly thereafter, the Pilgrims harvested their first successful crop. He took ill of influenza and died. And the Pilgrims buried him on a gentle slope overlooking the bay. On those cold, bleak shores in the year 1622, Governor William Bradford of the Plymouth Colony spoke these very words. He hath brought us through the valley of depression. He did defend us from savage enemies. He did show us whereof to eat. He did bring us the beast of the forest that we might have clothing. Receive him, O Almighty Father. Receive this savage, Tesquantum, this red man of the new world wilderness. For without his mighty spirit, thy pilgrim colony should have perished long ere now. Amen. Tonight on the Hallmark Hall of Fame, we honored a man most of us weren't too familiar with. Well, next week we're going to pay tribute to one of the most brilliant, fascinating, and versatile men that ever lived, Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> well, more about that in a moment. But first, here's Frank Goss to tell you how you can send your friends a Christmas card, a Christmas gift, and a Christmas decoration all in one. If you'd like to delight your friends with a decorative Christmas present you can mail in an envelope, here's exciting news. Now you can choose from three Hallmark Christmas cards that are really Christmas gifts. 
They're the Hallmark Christmas stagecoach, the Hallmark Christmas train, or the Hallmark sleigh, which is a copy of Santa's own. Now, each of these festive greetings comes flat for mailing in its own envelope, and each one can be set up in seconds to hold all the other cards your friends receive this season. An ingenious idea? You bet it is, because these bright Hallmark cards are gifts, too. And they are sure to have an honored place on a mantel or a window ledge where they will remind the receiver of your good wishes all through the holidays. Best of all, each of these special Hallmark cards costs just one dollar, complete with envelope. So why delay? Plan now to select all the Hallmark trains and sleighs and stagecoaches you'll want at a store where Hallmark cards are sold. You can count on it. Each one bears the familiar Hallmark and crown, the symbol you look for on all your cards when you care enough to send the very best. And now here again is Lionel Barrymore. You know, Frank, uh, listening to you tell about that new Hallmark stagecoach made me think back. I believe it was uh, Charles Dickens who, who first made the stagecoach such a popular Christmas symbol. It was in Mr. Pickwick, I think. Yeah, sure it was, Mr. Pickwick. Yeah, Dickens wrote about the coach bringing folks home to Dingley Dell for the holidays. And this new Hallmark stagecoach is a wonderful replica of the old Christmas stagecoach. Why, you can almost hear the crunch of the snow under the horse's hoofs. Well, there's even some poultry for the Christmas dinner hanging on the outside. I think these Hallmark cards are, the, that are also a gift and a decoration, like the stagecoach and the train and the sleigh, well, I think they're a really fine idea. They certainly are, Mr. Barrymore, and surprisingly, they cost only a dollar apiece. No. Well, well, now about next week's play. We've heard lots of stories about Ben Franklin, the statesman, but we're going to tell you a story about him that's both amusing and dramatic. It's called The Misunderstood Man, and it has to do with the lightning rod and Ben Franklin's one-man fight against the very institutions he'd founded. It's an exciting, entertaining, and revealing story. So be sure and be with us next week on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. Remember, you're also invited to the Hallmark Hall of Fame on television every Sunday, starring Miss Sarah Churchill. Until next week, then, this is Lionel Barrymore saying good night. Look for Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Our producer-director is William Gay. Our script tonight was written by Wilbur James. Squanto was played by Ben Wright. Featured in our cast were Raymond Burr, Ted DeCorsia, John Daner, William Conrad, Jack Edwards, Lawrence Dobkin, and Peter Leeds. Will you cause a traffic accident during the long Thanksgiving weekend ahead? This year, the National Safety Council predicts a heavy holiday death toll. Here's how to help avoid it. Allow plenty of time to get where you're going. Know and obey all traffic laws. Read and heed traffic signs. Remember, the life you save may be your own. This is Frank Goss saying goodnight to you until next week at the same time, when we'll tell you a little-known incident about Benjamin Franklin. And the following week, we'll tell you the actual story of Major Charles Yeager and his flight through the sound barrier. The week after that, we'll tell you about the founder of the famous Peace Awards, Alfred Nobel. And on December 20th, we'll again present Mr. Lionel Barrymore's traditional appearance as Scrooge in Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. This is the CBS Radio Network. This is CNBC, Kansas City, Missouri.